All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR once again coming at you with another video. And uh, this one is interesting. This is interesting. We're going to be talking about the initiative, you know, the Quadruple A studio uh, founded uh, under Xbox in 2018, just a few years ago. Um, and Crystal Dynamics, never thought I would necessarily have to talk about the initiative and Crystal Dynamics together in, in one video, but we are because last night, um, the official initiative twi uh, Twitter account announced that the initiative is partnering uh, with Crystal Dynamics to help uh, to, to develop Perfect Dark. We know that's, you know, the uh, first game that the initiative has worked on uh, since being uh, founded. They announced that, I think, last year. They've been working on it since, like, since their inception, like I said, 2018, and we just learned that it was Perfect Dark a year ago. So now we learned, um, let me read the official tweet. They said, Perfect Dark update. We are partnering with Crystal Dynamics, the world-class team behind character-driven games such as Tomb Raider, to bring this first-person spy thriller to a new generation. The first thing that stands out to me that I found a little bit interesting is that they did not mention Avengers at all. Like, they, they just completely skipped and bypassed the fact that Crystal Dynamics also worked on Avengers and went straight to Tomb Raider. Yeah, they worked on Tomb Raider. Let's, let's act like and pretend Avengers didn't exist, I guess. I could be reading too, uh, a little bit too deep into that, but I, ju I, ju I just found that interesting. Um, and we know Avengers wasn't met with the, with the best reception, right? So getting into what's so interesting and also a little bit befuddling, I, I, I guess, about this is because the initiative is a quadruple A studio. That's not my words. That's not anybody else's words. Those are Xbox's words. Those are Xbox's official words on what the purpose of the initiative is to make quadruple A games. Now, maybe somebody could inform me, but I'm not aware of any other studio in existence that necessarily wears that title and like goes by the label that we make quadruple A uh, caliber games. And and when we when we talk about A, you know, the the type of game studios make um uh it, it's it's a few different things. Sometimes it's budget, it's production, the you know, the 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 level of production, it's budget. It's all those different things that that tie into what exactly triple A or double A you know, quadruple A exactly is, right? But I don't know any other studio that that claims that that they make those type of games. Um, so the the so what they're pretty much saying is the production level and the budget for the games they are going to make is somewhat unprecedented, and there is essentially no limit. They're going above and beyond what we consider to be triple A. Okay, that's the first thing. So the, the confusing part comes in is if you're a triple A studio and everything that comes with that, I'm assuming you have that. I'm assuming that anything that that Xbox, anything that you need, Xbox and Microsoft is going to provide to you to make the most amazing game possible. Budget, resources, manpower, your quadruple A studio, you are going to get that. So if that's the case. Why exactly, the question is why exactly would they need to partner with a third-party developer to, assu to uh, I'm assuming, co-develop this game? Those That part doesn't really make sense to me. Why does a quadruple A studio need help in developing their own in-house game? Right now, here's the thing, right? When you... It's not strange for a studio to get help from another studio to develop a game. That's that's not necessarily the strange part. But you're one, you're a quadruple A studio. That's number one, right? So you should, like I said, you should have all the manpower, resources, money, all that stuff. So the fact that you're a quadruple A studio, you need help. Also, when a studio usually gets help, it's usually from studios with from other studios under that same umbrella uh, in that same family. For example, 
We hear about PlayStation Studios collaborations all the time. Like Sucker Punch got help from Naughty Dog. Uh, Naughty Dog works with Santa Monica. Santa Monica has helped Sony Bend. You know, they cross they cross pollinate and, and, and all of that stuff. That's not strange, right? We hear about that all the time. Sony X Dev. Um, I, I believe I heard that they said at, at some point, not obviously not all at one time during the whole development of The Last of Us Part Two, but 2,000 people had a part in creating The Last of Us Part Two. 2,000. That's what I believe I heard. That wasn't the development all throughout the, the years it's been, been development, but at some point, 2,000 people touched this game. And that's way beyond, that's way bigger than what um, Naughty Dog as a studio actually is. So getting help is not strange, right? But it's usually um, from it's usually from the family. It's usually from studios under that same umbrella, or it's like uh, contractors that you that you source or something like that. It, it's it's I I can't think of a case where I've seen a third party help a a first party in this manner, right? Because for example, um, Santa Monica teamed up with, I think there's this like, there's the, there, there's, there's this smaller studio called Valkyrie. Um, and you know, that, that name matches very well with like the God of War theme and everything like that. They team that like that a team called Valkyrie is helping, um, Santa Monica with certain parts of God of War. I, I think it's mostly art assets and things like that art development, right? But you don't hear announcements necessarily about that. It's not something that you'll hear Sucker Punch, Naughty Dog, uh, Sony Ben, Santa Monica announce that, hey, we're working with this studio uh, on this game, usually because their, their contribution to the game is much smaller and it's not worth an announcement. So for the initiative to come out and announce, hey, we're getting Crystal Dynamics to help us with this game, that implies that Crystal Dynamics is going to have a major part in the development process. You don't announce somebody like helping you uh, to make a game if they're only making like one out ten percent of the game, fifteen. They're they they might be helping with you know a small piece of the art. They might be just helping with one game mechanic, something small like that. If their if their contribution is small, it's not worth an announcement. This implies that they are a major factor in making this game come to fruition. So that's the that's part of the the thing that's odd. The the other thing is when. If this type of thing happens, it usually happens or is announced at the very beginning in the at the very beginning of the process. This seems to be something that happened along the way because they realized they needed assistance or needed help, major help. And why once again, why would they need that? It it does I, I should also mention um, this plays a part in it. The initiative, the initiative studio head, Daryl Gallagher, was the head of uh, Crystal Dynamics from 2009 to 2016. So that probably plays a part a part in this, right? So it's just rare. It's rare where you find a major third party developer teaming up with a first party to co what seems to be co develop a game. So it, it's just weird, like. And, and this also points to the fact that this game is very far off. If you're just announcing, just announcing that you are teaming up with Crystal Dynamics to help make this game, then this game is even farther than we thought it would be from actually releasing. It's, it's significantly farther than, than we thought, in my opinion, if you're just announcing this. So... And then, and then you obviously know what's going to come with this. The whole acquisition rumors, you know, because anytime Xbox makes any type of move, their fans start the accusation, the the acquisition rumors, um, because th yeah, this is strange in general. So all types of rumors are going to be coming from this. People are going to be asking questions. And here's the thing: I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying it's peculiar. It's strange. It's odd. It's not something we see very often in this manner. 
Like I said, studios work together all the time, but not in this capacity that at least we see or we hear of very often. I, like I said, if somebody could could state a case in 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 this way that we've seen before, I'm 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 willing to hear it. And the other thing is Crystal Dynamics. Out of all studios, Crystal Dynamics. I'm not saying Crystal Dynamics is a bad studio, right? I'm not saying that we should define Crystal Dynamics solely based on Avengers um, or the last Tomb Raider because Avengers sucks, in my opinion, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider sucks, even though Eidos, I think Eidos, uh, I think Eidos was the lead developer in, um, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Crystal Dynamics helped. I'll give them that. Okay, let, let's not put the whole, uh, the whole blame for Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Crystal. Let's blame Eidos because uh, I believe, let me let me check. Uh, well, I don't know because when you look at Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the original uh, Tomb Raider from 2013, all of the developers say Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. So I'm honestly not sure who took the lead on all three of those games because it says all of them because according to what I'm looking at, all of them developed all three of these games. So I'm not sure. But all I know is the last Shadow, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was pretty bad. I think Rise of the Tomb Raider and, two, and Tomb Raider 2013 were amazing. Um, and Avengers sucked. But even when you put, put that aside, I don't really see... When you look at the type of games that Crystal Dynamics has helped with, I don't really see their skill set necessarily being exactly what you need for a first person shooter. That's not when you look at their resume, that's not where their skills line up. Now, now developers are very versatile. It's not like just because a developer has mainly worked on third person adventure games means they can't uh, lend some of their skills to developing a first person a first person game. Um, because we don't even know exactly what what aspect of the game they're working on. They they might not necessarily be working on the gameplay that that deeply into the gameplay part. They might not. So they might be lending their skills and uh, manpower to uh, to other things that they don't need necessarily a whole bunch of expertise in first person shooters, right? So that's that's plausible. That's that's very possible and plausible. I'm just throwing things out there and just trying to analyze this from a logical perspective. That's all. Um, so my point is, it's it's still strange at the end of the day. Um, maybe some maybe somebody smarter than me could break this down and give us insight from an angle that we are not looking at this. Because yeah, this this does look. I, I will say, from my perspective, this does look more like a red flag than than something positive i do think that them getting help uh them getting help is better for uh better for the game in the long run but it also just poses the question why do you need help right so it, it it's better for the game in the long run but as of right now it brings up brings up questions about the studio itself because one of the things we've always questioned about, questioned about studios under Microsoft is the management. And it's like, it, it, there's always been a question of like, why or how, why can't, or, or can these studios like pretty much manage themselves properly and deliver uh, high quality games like a lot of the Sony studios do? Like Nintendo Studios do. I mean, that's always been a question. It for a long time because when you look at is the when you look at uh, what Xbox Studios produce when they're kind of left to their own devices and left to their own um, left to management, it's it's not it's it, it's not a great track record. Is my point? It's not a great track record all the time, and it, it's almost like do they need to be micromanaged sometimes because like. They, there, se there seems to be somewhat lack of direction at Xbox Studios. 
at least in in the, in the recent past. I'm not necessarily talking about the new studio acquisitions and that stuff because those studios were functioning how they were functioning prior to acquisitions. But before that, you know, it's like I don't know. Sometimes it feels like people don't know what they're doing. But um, you know, those are just the, some of the, th- the factors I wanted to bring up and um, some of my questions about this. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the uh, notification bell so you can know anytime I go live. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Hit the join button. Support the channel. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about this more on Weapon Wheel Podcast on Sunday. And I'm sure there's going to be a Twitter space about it today. It's going to be interesting. So maybe we'll get more insight. Maybe this is uh, a lot to do about nothing and we're overblowing this. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm out of here. Catch you all on the next video. Peace.